In this class, we will introduce Java database connectivity in Java. Java database connectivity is also referred by the acronym JDBC. Okay. So let's start what JDBC is. JDBC basically enables Java applications to connect to different kinds of relational databases. Relational databases are called as RDBMSs. There are different kinds of relational databases like Oracle, MySQL, Sybase, Informix and so on. So JDBC basically provides you an API which has some interfaces and classes from the java.sql package and there are some drivers which provide the implementation for the JDBC API to connect to different databases. These drivers basically contain classes that implement the interfaces in the JDBC API. Okay. Java in Java you write code you write code once and it can run anywhere wherever there is a JVM or a Java runtime environment available with JDBC you write once and then you can connect with any kind of data, data, relational database okay so that's a adv main advantage of using JDBC and there are four different kinds of drivers that are available the type 1 to type 4 so you have type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. So now let's look at what all these different kinds of drivers are. The type 1 is what is called as a JDBC ODBC bridge driver. And the type 2 is a native API and it is, it is partly some Java code as well. And the third one is uses a middleware server to connect to the database. And the fourth one is all Java with a pure native protocol driver. Let's briefly look at all these four kinds of JDBC drivers. So the type 1 driver is a JDBC ODBC bridge driver where the Java application uses the JDBC API and there's a bridge driver which sits between this ODBC bridge and the database. And the bridge driver uses its own internal driver and connects to the database. So, the advantage is it allows access to any kind of database since every database has an ODBC driver. Okay. The disadvantage is that the bridge driver is not fully written in Java, so it is not portable across different platforms. And it is the slowest of all the driver types because the JDBC call goes through the bridge and then to the ODBC driver and then to the database. And the client system also requires an ODBC installation to use the driver. So you need to install the ODBC driver on the client machine as well. In the type 2 driver, it converts the JDBC calls to database specific calls. So there is a native API driver and a native API. So what happens is the JDBC API calls are converted to native API calls via the native API using the native API driver. So Oracle will have its own Oracle native API, Sybase will have its own Sybase native API. So every database will provide its own native API and driver. These type 2 drivers of offer better performance than the type 1 drivers as the number of layers of communication are less than the type 1 drivers. But the disadvantage is that the native API must be installed on the client system. And hence, the type 2 drivers cannot be used for the internet. And like the type 1 drivers, they are not written in Java, so they are not portable across different platforms. If we change the database anytime, like if we move from Oracle to Sybase, we'll also have to change the native driver. So you have to move from the Oracle native API driver to the Sybase native API driver. And these are usually obsolete and are, they are not thread safe as well. So if you have a th multi-threaded program, the uh, some of these type 2 drivers are not thread safe in the type 3 drivers we have, what we have is a middleware component and all the data, uh, jdbc api requests are translated are uh, translated by using this middleware component so they pass the type 3 drivers pass the database request from the jdbc api to this middleware server which then translates that request to 
the corresponding database. And this middleware server or component can use type 1, type 2 or type 4 drivers. So this driver is server based. So there is no need for any vendor database library to be present on the client machines. This driver is fully written in Java and so it is completely portable. Okay. And the type 3 drivers, they are very flexible. They allow access to multiple database using just one driver. And they are the most efficient among all the driver types. The only disadvantage with the type 3 driver is it requires you to install the middleware server component and there may be a slight lag in performance when you are traversing through a record set that you retrieve when you retrieve data from the database. Finally we have the type 4 driver. It uses the Java networking libraries to communicate directly with the database server. So we have the Java, JD, Java application using the JDBC API and then there is a thin type 4 driver which accesses the database. So there is a different kind of driver for each database as well. So this, this driver is completely written in Java so it provides platform independence and it is suitable for using web-based applications. And the number of translation, is, translation layers is, is very less. So type 4 drivers they don't have to translate requests to ODBC or native API drivers or to another server. So the performance is quite good. And you don't need to install any special server software neither on the client nor on the server. Okay, But you still require a different driver for each database. So for Oracle you'll need the Oracle specific driver. For MySQL you need the MySQL driver. Now let's look at a simple example program in which you use the JDBC API to connect to a database and retrieve some data from the database. So here I have a simple example JDBC program. Okay. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to get a connection to the database. And this connection is nothing but an interface in the java.sql package. So all these classes interfaces here, the driver will provide the corresponding classes which implement those interfaces. So in this particular case, I'm using this driver. I need to set the system property with the name jdbc.drivers and the class name that I want to use is com.mysql.jdbc.driver. So I'm looking for a class called com.mysql.jdbc.driver.class. And this class must be in the driver class which has, which has to be in the class path. So let's look at whether our packet, our project has this in the class path. So look at the training package and go to build path and configure the build path. And then in the libraries package you will see that there is a driver for MySQL which is called as MySQL connector dash Java 5.1.18 bin dot jar which is in the training libs jdbc folder. So let's go to that folder called training libs jdbc. So if I go to the training libs jdbc I'll see that jar and let me open that jar in 7-zip and I will open the jar in 7-zip I can go to com.mysql.jdbc and in that folder I should see the driver.class file. So here I see the driver.class file. And see here, you'll see the connection.class file as, as well. So that's the implementation provided by provided by this MySQL driver driver jar file. So this the jar is, should be in the class path, and when you run your program, it's going to pick up that jar. It's going to pick up this class file from that jar file, and then you need to specify a URL which identifies the location of the database and also the credentials used to connect to the database. So this URL for MySQL, this URL format changes from one database to another database. For MySQL this is the format. For Oracle it could be a different format. Okay. 
So for uh, MySQL, you say JDBC colon MySQL colon slash slash the host name on which the MySQL server is running. In this case, it is running on my local machine, so I call it local host. And then I have to give the port number of the database server. This is the default port 3306 for MySQL server when you when you install MySQL. Some MySQL administrators could install this on a different port number. Then in that case, you need to use a different port number. And if the database server is running on some other machine, you need to give the IP address of that machine here. And then finally, you need to give the name of the database. I have a database called Northwind. And then I have to give the credentials used to connect to the database. So I'm connecting as user ID root with the password of welcome. So this whole string URL, which is the uniform uh, uniform resource locator identifies a resource. In this particular case, it is identifying a resource called Northwind database, which is on this MySQL server, on this port number, and you connect to that using this user ID and password. Okay. Then from the driver manager, you get the connection by passing this URL. And then when you try to get the connection, you can get an exception. When you get an exception, you print the stack trace and exit. Okay. If the, if you get if you successfully get the connection, you don't exit from the program, and then you create a statement. Okay. You see connection dot create statement. You can also create what is called as a prepared statement, and then you can insert some data into the table. So in this in this particular case, I'm inserting into the categories table. And I'm giving uh, values for these two columns, category name and description. And these question marks are called as bind parameters. The bind parameters will take some values that you specify later on. And the advantage of a prepared statement is the statement can be cached and optimized. So these first two question marks are set by using the prepared statement dot set string. So one corresponds to the first question mark and two corresponds to the session question, second question mark. So the category name is junk food and the description is food that makes you fat. And then you do an execute update and that will insert that row into the categories table. Next what I'll do is I'll execute a query. This query retrieves the category ID and description, category ID, category name and description from the categories table. And there could be more than one so what I do is I it gives you what is called as a result set interface okay the result set is like an iterator so you keep checking whether it has one more row so you keep iterating over it as long as there is an, a row available to traverse so in each row you have a set of columns so you can say the result set dot get string and you give the name of the column that you have retrieved so you have retrieved category ID, category name and description. So you can say get string on category ID, category name and description. And you can print out each of them. In this case what I'm doing is I'm just, just doing a print for each column and for the last column I do a println. So that every after printing every row I go to the next line. And if there are any exceptions I print the stack trace. And then finally I have to close the result set. Okay. And then I have to close the statement and the prepared statement as well. The statement is used for running the query and the prepared statement is used for running the update, for running the insert statement. So what we can do is I can move this guy to the point where it is being used. Now let's leave it the way it is. because I need to move the catch blocks as well. So I'm creating two statements. One is a statement for executing a query and I'm using a prepared statement for executing an insert statement. In the insert statement, I'll use, I'm using different kinds of values. So I can reuse this prepared statement because I've used this bind parameters. With bind parameters, nothing is hard coded. You pass values at the time when you want to use it. So I can insert multiple rows into the database using the same prepared statement but by passing different values for those question marks. You can 
consider those question marks as placeholders. So whenever you want to use, you substitute that placeholders with real values. And you do that over here. Here it shows how you use different values for those two question marks. Okay, now let's run this program. Say run as Java application. And there is an error. It says duplicate entry junk food for key category name. So here you can see the entire stack trace. So what has happened is I have already run this program earlier so it does not want me to insert the same record because there is a constraint in the database column that the category ID, category name cannot be duplicated. It has to be unique. So let's go and delete that entry for called junk food from the Northwind database from the categories table. So go to the object view here and go to the data and then there is junk food. So let's remove that. So you can press this cross mark here and it will delete it and then you save it. Okay. And then we'll run the program again. Okay. I've run the program. So it has inserted the data for junk food category called junk food and the description is food that makes you fat and I've retrieved this data by going through and executing this query so first I insert into this table and then I run this query to retrieve all the data and if you go and see the database go and do a refresh here this is a refresh button and then I'll see a new entry called junk food so I've inserted the data and have retrieved data by using this example JDBC program. One important thing to, re to note is look at all the different kinds of catch statements and finally statements. The catch statements catch the SQL exceptions that are possible whenever you execute a statement or whenever you close a result set or a statement. So here we, st we close the statement and the prepared statement and finally we also have to close the connection and we on only close the connection when the connection is not null and when you close the connection at that time also there could be some exception so we have to catch that as well and print the stack trace okay so I want you to run this program and see and get a feel of how you can write JDBC programs in, in Java.